Good morning, all. And welcome. We are glad to have you here today. Once more, good morning. Good morning. Welcome to all of you on such a beautiful day. Um, what a great day to skip church, right? Because it's beautiful outside. But we're glad that you're here. And for those of you joining us at home, thank you for also taking the time to be with us as we celebrate Pentecost Sunday. I'm reminded today, um, Catholic priest and community organizer, Virgilio Elizondo, in writing of Pentecost, wrote these words. An important element of this new power is that it is not power for the sake of personal gain, but power for the sake of all the oppressed, ignored, forgotten, and exploited members of society. The powerless are recouping power, the power of the gospel, which works for the betterment and liberation of all, especially those in greatest need. No matter how difficult it might be, liberation will succeed because human power cannot keep Jesus in the tomb. So as we engage over the coming weeks in, uh, in our reshape study, I'm, I'm really hoping that one of the things that we keep at the heart of our thought um, is that there's a conviction we have um, that all those who had been dead are coming to life. The oppressed, the forgotten, um, the, the minority, all of those who have been kept to the sidelines for so long because of the tomb and because of Pentecost and the power of the Spirit are coming back to life as we speak. Let's keep that at the forefront of who we are as a community uh, as we move forward. Looking forward to gathering with you in worship now, so please stand as we sing. <laughs> kids that want to come up and join me up front, come on down. Good morning. All right. First, I want to say something to everybody sitting out here. If you've been at Harmony Springs, for a children's moment for any amount of weeks, you know that we have a, Kason and I have a running joke, uh, which is that if I ask a question of them for an answer, Kason's answer is always, 
chicken, yes. Yep, chicken. Uh, so I got one for you today, my friend. Do you know why they call a chicken, why chicken coops have two doors? Because if they had four, they'd be a sedan. <laughs> but they all got it. All right, jokes aside, today is a big holiday in the church's year. It's one that kind of, because of where it falls and it's summertime and we're ready to be done with school and every, everybody's ready to go on vacation, it's not quite as exciting sometimes as Christmas or Easter, but what is today? You two know what it is? What is it? Tell us. Here, we'll turn this on, and I swear if you say chicken. Ducky. Okay. What's, what's today? Ducky. No. You, don't, you don't know? Pe I know. It's double. Pe Starts with a P. Did you hear it? What do we got? You got it, Azel? Do you know? Pentecost. It's called Pentecost. Yeah. Pentecost. Uh, and there is a story in the book of Acts in the gospel where the spirit of God that Jesus promised would come and help his disciples follow him and be the church in the world. All the disciples are gathered in a room and then this crazy thing happened and that's why we celebrate Pentecost because it's a celebration of the spirit and we remember this crazy story where the winds blew and then fire came down from heaven and like rested on their heads. And Pastor Kim and I don't normally wear these, but we both have Pentecost stoles, so we thought it'd be fun to bring them out today. So look at this, what's on my stole? Yeah, fire, which, yeah. It's kind of pretty, yes. And what's this? Yeah, a dove which symbolizes God's spirit. Do you see the same thing on Pastor Kim's stole? Look at her stole over there. Yeah. Pretty cool. Well, I know what today is. What? Ducky Day. Well, it could be. So, Christmas, we celebrate Jesus, right? Easter, we celebrate Jesus dying and come back, coming back to life. Pentecost, we celebrate the Spirit coming into the world and helping us be the best followers of Jesus we possibly can be. All right? Let me pray for you, and then I'll send you back to class today, all right? Loving and gracious God, thank you for your Spirit, how your Spirit guides and directs us and helps us to be your followers. Bless these kids as they go back to keep learning about you and to being the people you want them to be. In your name we pray. Amen. Acts chapter 2, verses 1 through 21. When the day of Pentecost arrived, they all met in one room. Suddenly they heard what sounded like a violent rush wind from heaven. The noise filled the entire house in which they were sitting. Something appeared to them that seemed like tongues of fire. These separated and came to rest on the head of each one. They were all filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other languages, as she enabled them. Now there were devout people living in Jerusalem from every nation under heaven, and this sound they all assembled, but they were bewildered to hear their native language being spoken. They were amazed and astonished. Surely all these people speaking are Galileans. How does it happen that each of us hear these words in our native tongue? We are Parthians, Medes, Emilites, people from Mesopotamia, Green, Judea, Cappadocia, <laughs> Pontus, and Asia, Pamphylia, Egypt, and parts of Libya, 
around Serene, as well as visitors from Rome, all Jews or converts to Judaism, Cretans and Arabs too. We hear them preaching each in our own language about the marvels of God. All were amazed and disturbed. They asked each other, what does this mean? But others said mockingly, they have drunk too much new wine. Then Peter stood up with the 11 and addressed the crowd, women and men of Judea, and all of you who live in Jerusalem, listen to what I have to say. These people are not drunk as you think. It's only nine o'clock in the morning. No, it's what Joel the prophet spoke. In the days to come, it is our God who speaks. I will pour out my spirit on all humankind. Your daughters and sons will prophesy. Your young people will see visions, and your elders will dream dreams. Even on the most insignificant of my people, both women and men, I will pour out my spirit in those days, and they will prophesy, and I will display wonders in the heavens above and signs on the earth below, blood, fire, and billowing smoke. The sun will turn into darkness, and the moon will become blood before the coming of the great and sublime day of our God. And all who call upon the name of our God will be saved. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. As we continue our prayers, we do offer prayers for Pastor Joel and his family and all the servants of the church as we lift our Lord up in prayer. Let us pray. Lord, we thank you for these words and the tongues of fire. Lord, help us to navigate next steps as we, Lord, go through the reshaping and the rebuilding, the transformation of our lives and of the church as we, like the disciples, Lord, stand ready and waiting for your will and way to be upon us, to move around us and through us through the gift of your Holy Spirit as we celebrate Pentecost this day. We celebrate your love magnified through being our advocate, the one who speaks to us and through us, who proceeds and is behind and beside us. Thank you, living God. As we continue to trust you with our lives, we pray for people everywhere and around the world. We pray justice, mercy, and peace for every heart. We ask you, Lord, to help caregivers, those caregiving for elderly or children, those spiritual directors of, of, their, of their little families. As we pray, Lord, for summer vacation, for each parent to have strength and caregiver to have strength, Lord, as, as they lead in comfort. Help us, God, as we are given many provisions and have an even help from first responders, police, and fire. Protect them even as we witness a weekend of tragedy. Help us, God, as we know that you are with us, never to leave us or forsake us. We ask you on this day of Pentecost, as they all heard in their own tongue, may we, Lord, be united even in our diverse thoughts, that you unite us through the gift and inspiration of your holy love and magnificent Holy Spirit, as you transform us in the reshaping of our hearts and minds, and the reshaping of the church. May again our call be your will, and your way for our lives as we submit, Lord, for peace in our hearts, again, peace around the world, as we look to you, the pioneer and perfecter of our faith, as we pray the words you taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen.
All right, my friends, good morning again. Today, being Pentecost, we are, uh, since it is the birthday of the church, a celebration of that, we're launching a new thing here at Harmony Springs over the next few weeks. You may have read about it or heard about it or heard me mention it these past few weeks. Uh, it's called Reshape Church, a, a transforming church initiative. And I want to give you some. Uh, today is a big introduction to this whole thing, which we will be doing over the next eight weeks. Uh, so let me first of all say thank you for being willing, even if you're unwilling participant, I guess. Thank you for uh, being here. And I, I just want to encourage you to... It's sort of an all-skate, church all-skate kind of participation thing. So I want to encourage you to keep that in mind as we go forward. Uh, in, there are a number of ways that you can participate and contribute to this whole process. I hope that today we'll be able to cover sort of what it is and where I hope we might go with this and end with an invitation for you to continue participating in this process over the next few weeks. Back at the beginning of the year, I can't believe we're already almost halfway through the year, almost exactly. Back at the beginning of the year, a colleague of mine posted on Facebook uh, this initiative, Reshape Church, that is a joint collaboration between uh, an organization uh, helping churches transform called Pinnacle Leadership Associates uh, and a seminary located in Shawnee, Kansas called Central Baptist Seminary. She posted uh, a link to this program that they had gotten funded through the Lilly Foundation, which if you've ever heard of the Lilly Foundation, they do a lot of really good work with churches, uh, working with churches to help continue to make sure that we are being the best expression of ourselves in the world, uh, doing renewal grants for pastors. If you hear of a pastor going on sabbatical at their church, it's most likely funded by the Lilly Foundation, uh, et cetera, et cetera. So, uh, I saw this link posted and it was intriguing to me because the last time as a church we had gone through a process of sort of putting together a vision about where we wanted to go over the next few years, believe it or not, was 2018 into 2019. A lot has changed in the world since 2018 and 2019. It feels like it was just yesterday, but also a long time ago uh, because we all experienced a disruptive and transforming uh, worldwide event, the coronavirus and pandemic in 2020 into 2021. So I think most organizations or businesses may have had some sort of plan on where they wanted to go together pre-pandemic, and then the pandemic just sort of like wiped all of that out. Part of the discussion that uh, I hope that we can journey together in over these next few weeks is how disruptive events or volatile events in our lives, in the world, in the church, how we can view them in a way uh, in which we can learn from them, grow, and adapt. Today we read from the book of Acts, what you probably know now well, the story of Pentecost. The early disciples were gathered together, not really sure how they were going to move forward, but knowing that Jesus had told them, I'm gonna help you move forward and I'm gonna help send you an advocate that will help guide you and direct you. I can't imagine that any one of those disciples could have envisioned that this is how it was gonna start that they would be gathered together in a room, probably making some plan about how they were gonna move forward, uh, really getting everybody on board and behind it, and then God had otherworldly plans that came down from heaven, literally, in the form of tongues of fire. And all of a sudden, these followers started speaking languages, and all the people there uh, somehow, mysteriously, understood what they were saying together. Even though they were all from different regions, spoke different languages, probably looked different, had different backgrounds, different experiences, different customs, etc., etc. 
I would say for the church, as we look back now as that as the birthday of the church, it might be important for us to remember that the church was born in, in and in the midst of a volatile world and disruptive event. Certainly, if we know anything about the first century that Jesus lived in and the disciples followed him in, we know that the world was volatile. And this disruptive, spirit-filled event <laughs> was even more disruptive, if that could even be possible. So, I'm taking this Sunday as Pentecost, as the Sunday to launch this discussion, Harmony Springs Together, uh, because I think it fits well. The church was born in a world that was disruptive and volatile, and the pandemic did the same thing for us, turned a lot of things upside down in our lives, helped us appreciate things that we might not have fully appreciated before, and began integrating things like technology and live streaming and Zoom, etc., that maybe we dabbled in before or a few people used, but now, of course, we all use it, it seems like, all the time. So now, I'm going back, skipping back to this reshape process. I read about this process and uh, the information, I went through it, and uh, we are, we applied as a church and got accepted into this process. Uh, because from start to finish, uh, we are journeying together with a handful of other churches uh, from North Carolina to Kansas, uh, and around the country, because you can do that now post-pandemic, right? We didn't used to do that kind of thing. We all, like, all like, had to be in the same room together. Now it turns out we don't have to be in the same room together, or we can virtually be in the same room together. Uh, so we applied and got accepted into this program. And the whole idea behind this, and I want to I think this is funny, the way we write these mission statements, and maybe your business or organization has one, right? The, re, the purpose of the reshape uh, process, this is what they wrote. It, it's a guided process for capturing and integrating the innovation and adaptation resulting from volatile life experiences, transforming churches into greater expressions of the body of Christ. Lots of words in there, right? Uh, that's what I hope that we might engage in, or they hope we might engage in. So, what does this mean for us? I think as I've learned about since the beginning of the year this process and read through uh, the book that will help guide us through this process and had some initial discussions with our leadership team and staff uh, going through these chapters and the questions associated, this is what I hope we might accomplish over the next few weeks. I think we have to dust off our ministry plan that we put together in 2018 into 2019. There's a lot of good stuff that we came up with there, uh, but like I said, the pandemic, pandemic has changed a lot of things and the world is different. I guess we should have expected that that would be the case. So it's time to pull that back out, dust it off, Maybe not change everything from top to bottom, but definitely look at it with fresh eyes and a new perspective. And the bottom line here is that in our own lives, in the church and in the world, volatile events, the things that we didn't see coming, the things that we didn't expect in life, uh, can change us and force us in a lot of ways, to be innovative and to adapt. I heard a speaker years ago say this, and it's really stuck with me, and I think it's applicable here. Uh, life has ne never, uh, for any of us, has turned out the way fully that we might have planned or expected. Amen? Even if most of your life has turned out the way you planned or expected when you were younger, there's a lot of things that happen in the world that we can't control that happen to us, like the pandemic, right? Uh, and in our own lives, that happens. In churches, that happened. If 
25 years ago, we had asked the people sitting in the sanctuary at High Street Christian Church in downtown Akron if they thought that we would look like church like this in 2024. I don't think they would have seen that coming either. Maybe a few people did. Volatile events in our lives, the unexpected, uh, and this is what I've been holding on to that I heard a speaker say uh, years ago. When those sorts of things happen in our lives, we have, and this is maybe oversimplistic, but nevertheless true, I think, uh, we have two choices. One, we can double down on what we thought our lives should look like and fight the change every step of the way, or we can accept that life just is, does not turn out the way we might have expected in so many ways and uh, choose to adapt and innovate, take those experiences, learn from them, and be the kind of people God is calling us to be into the future. On one hand, if we fight that, if we fight those unexpected things that happen in life, uh, there's a number of things that, a number of ways we become, right? Uh, first of all, I think we can become bitter and cynical. It's like where it's us against the world and we fight everything and everyone all the time at every turn. On the other hand, I think we can accept the truth of the way things are or the way things are going to be, and then we can adapt and change accordingly. The two choices sort of are before us. Church is no different, and I'm thankful every day that the folks that were sitting in the sanctuary over the last 10 to 25 years at High Street decided uh, that instead of fighting it, and some people did, right? Instead of fighting it, we would accept that the world has changed and that the church also ought to change. I heard one speaker say years ago that, uh, in general, speaking about the church, if the 1950s ever come around again, the church is going to be ready for it. Uh, we, uh, though at Harmony Springs, a part of our story has been to understand that the world is changing. People's habits about how we view and attend and participate in church are changing. And yet God still loves this world and calls us to invite the world God still loves into community and to follow Jesus. So instead of closing doors and fighting it, some wise people at High Street decided, let's re-examine everything and keep taking steps forward. And look, here we are, Harmony Springs. One thing I wanna say now as I sort of extend this invitation to you to, you, to be a part of this discussion Here's the idea. We are not the kind of church that is a top-down sort of structure. We don't have people or a pastor sitting at the top in their office and coming up with a plan and saying, uh, now everybody go do it. We believe in what in seminary we call the priesthood of all believers, which means all of us have the right to be a right and privilege to be able to hear from God and that all of our opinions matter. We are much more organic in that way. And so this process, I hope, is designed to invite us all to do just that, to give our opinions, to be a part of discussions, uh, to consider how we might move forward together as church in the world in which we now find ourselves. To do that, we, this program has developed uh, a structure or a system or a process for us to go through this process over the next eight weeks, which involves being a part of a small group of people discussing the important topics uh, or considering the important part, parts of what it means to be church in the world. So we have some ways that you can be involved. Here's the invitation. Uh, you can show up on Sunday mornings here at 9.15 in the back room and join a group of people who are going through this book, Reshape, the book has the same title, Reshape Church. Uh, you can 
show up on Thursday evenings on Google Meet with Jim Blankenship uh, at 8.30 p.m. So we put it a little bit later. So if you have kids and you put them in bed, then you can jump on the computer together and be a part of a discussion that Jim, I'm sure, is going to do a great job leading uh, for the next few weeks. Or you can show up starting on Saturday morning at 10 a.m. here with Carol Cadwalder. Uh, that study doesn't start until June 1st, so you can grab a copy of the book and read through up to chapter four, I would say, and then uh, she will get that group caught up with us along the way. Now, I want to say this, and sorry, this was a long introduction before the video, but uh, we have assigned to us a coach that is a part of this whole thing. His name is Ursel Harrison. He and I meet, he's down in Tennessee, he and I meet via Zoom on a regular, almost uh, bi-weekly basis to talk about where we're at in this process. Uh, and I want to tell you this story about Ursel. At the very first Zoom meeting we had with all of the churches participating in this, there are a number of coaches, and they all took three or four churches, give or take, uh, to coach, meet with their pastors and their leadership team. Uh, but Ursel only took one church, and that was us. I don't know if that means he thought we were going to be a lot of work. <laughs> I don't think that was it. In our first meeting with all of the churches, he said, there was one church that intrigued me so much with their story as I read about them on their own website and Googled them. One church that intrigued me so much that I just had to be their coach. I don't know why he didn't get assigned any other churches, but uh, Ursel, I've come to know and love. He's a great guy with a sense of humor, and we see a lot of things very similar. Uh, and he recorded a video to say hello to all of you, and I want to share that with you this morning as we get started in this process. Thanks, Donna. Thank you for allowing me to be part of your launch day for Reshaping Church. I'm Russell Harrison, an associate with Pinnacle Leadership Associates and a supplementary professor at Central Seminary. I'll be your coach for this initiative. Reshaping Church is a, a guided process for capturing the innovation and adaptation resulting from volatile life experiences. In so doing, helping churches transform into greater expressions of the body of Christ. Your church is certainly familiar with change and adaptation. You've learned a lot in the past decade and your learning continues. Though change can be unsettling and disruptive, we recognize that God works through every life and community experience. Many churches and their leaders are hearing the call to transformation inherent in these life disruption events. The Reshaping Church process provides an opportunity for your church to engage in listening, talking, learning, and acting it together to become a greater expression of the body of Christ. The Lilly Endowment has provided the resources for Central Seminary in partnership with Pinnacle Associates to offer this process to your church. This approach is flexible and encourages your church to proceed in a way that's most helpful to you in your context. I'll be available to your pastor and leadership team as they guide the process. The Reshaping Church Initiative is an opportunity to turn volatile events into exceptional transformation opportunities. I pray that your church will embrace this process to reshape into a greater expression of the body of Christ in your context. A key part of this process is a small group experience where we can talk, learn, and pray together. We've provided the resources for our productive engagement around what it means to be the church in a changing context. Hope that you'll be able to engage as many people as possible in your small groups. It's in these settings that we really hear the voice of God. Missional Church consultant, Alan Roxborough, reminds us that the Spirit of God is moving among the people of God and will provide what we need to do God's work. I'll be praying with you and walking with you through this time. My prayer is that you'll use this time to hear God's voice and respond to God's call. God bless you all. Very good. I guess I could have saved you 20 minutes and just played that instead of me speaking for so long, but uh, 
I hope you get it. And uh, the last thing that I want to make sure that I highlight and share is this. I want to tell you this story. Over, for whatever reason in our house, uh, it's not a mystery, it's because our kids are involved in sports, uh, baseball and lacrosse. Uh, our family has sort of come in and out on Sunday morning, so uh, during this last month, especially in the month of April into May, uh, Emily has had to be home to take a kid to a lacrosse tournament or Today, Jubilee has academic challenge, of all things. They do that on Sunday morning, I guess. Uh, you know how things go these days. But uh, So last Sunday on Mother's Day, Emily finally had the opportunity to be here. And she hadn't actually been here on a Sunday for about a month. And we got in the car afterwards. And we were talking about church. And she looked at me and said, who are all these people? <laughs> And it made me think that over the last decade or so, as we've been transforming as a church, like, I think if you left here and didn't come back until six months from now or something, like, you would probably say the same thing. It's like every six months, three to six months, give or take, it's like we have a whole nother group of people that have found their way to us. I'm so grateful for that. Uh, more names to learn and kids to know. Uh, it's a great thing that we have and a positive, uh, positive and forward momentum that we have going here at Harmony Springs. And I want to say this, as we got started in this process, a number of us now, and I include myself in that group, have been a part of Harmony Springs for a decade or more, give or take. And after you're part of an organization for a number of years, I think it's just our human nature, you start to sort of settle in and be okay with the way things are. Last, last Wednesday, our staff was doing, uh, we were on like week four in the discussion of this. We're a little ahead uh, of where we will all be together as a church. And a number of us in the staff meeting, it was an activity where we talk about uh, brainstorm ideas of like, what are things as a church we're doing that we should let go of what things should we hold on to, and what things should we explore or new ideas we have. And a number of us who have been around for a while had a lot of good things that we have done over the last decade that we really like and want to hold on to. But then when we got to the explore phase, a lot of us were like, oh, I think we do things pretty well the way things are right now. And then, we, and then I looked over at Jim, who, I don't know, how long have you been, you and Tanya have been coming to Harmony Springs now? Two years. Two years? Okay, so you're newbies, I guess. Uh, and Jim, I looked over at Jim, and he goes, I got a list. <laughs> right? <clears throat> and then he started listing off the ideas that he had, and I thought, oh, my God, yes. Like, we have to hear from each other, especially if you have only been a part of Harmony Springs for two years or less, uh, you still see things that we do here with fresh eyes. And I want to say this to you, we need your voice and participation in this process because those of us who have gotten uh, okay with the way things are need you to help keep us moving forward. We need you to help us make the list of where we're going to be over the next few years. We, I value that. I want that, and I want to invite you uh, to contribute that. Here's the other, the other quick thing that I want to say. Uh, when it comes to this process, in, uh, helping us to process volatile events, I, me I mentioned the pandemic. The pandem pandemic was a big one that affected all of us, right? But we also have specific church volatile events that have affected us all, I think. If you've been a part of Harmony Springs since the transition from High Street, I would say, and others who have been a part of this discussion so far would say, that was a volatile event in our church's history and life. We uprooted and put down roots here in Green. Uh, it was a shift. Even if you weren't a part of Harmony Springs during Har High Street to Harmony Springs transition, here's what I've come to know to be true. The people that find themselves here, coming here to Harmony Springs, often most of the time have experienced some disruptive volatile event in whatever church you may have come from. 
Last week we talked about our Methodist friends. We have a whole contingent here of Harmony Spring, at Harmony Springs, of folks who were previously Methodist. And it just didn't fit them anymore. And maybe that's part of your story, maybe not Methodist, but maybe some other church. Uh, maybe like I jokingly say, you were sitting in a church congregational meeting like I did growing up, and people were arguing about the color of the carpet in the sanctuary, and you just thought to yourself, why is this important right now? Because there are way more important missional things we could be doing together as church. Whatever church disruptive event that brought you here, uh, I wanna make sure that during our discussions also, we share some of those stories. Because we have a story, Harmony Springs, we have a story that we tell uh, throughout Sundays and on our website, etc. cetera. Uh, but you also have a story, even if you weren't a part of us all the way back then, I think you probably have some understanding of what it was like. So all of that as a final invitation to say, uh, join one of these small groups, grab a copy of the book that's back here. At the very least, if you don't have time to participate in a small group, but I hope you do, uh, go through the book and answer the questions at the end. Uh, what's gonna happen then, the process, is that the leader of these small groups are gonna take notes every meeting and they're gonna turn those notes in about specific things to our leadership team. And then at the end of this process, our leadership team is gonna take all of those notes, read them and study them, and see if there's any themes that have weaved their way in and through all of these discussions, and then take those to put together what the program calls a reshape ministry plan, or what for us at Harmony Springs will be a revised version of our ministry plan. And then the Lilly Foundation, through this program, is gonna say, uh, boil it down to one big thing, new thing, you can start, and we're gonna give you $5,000 to help get that off the ground. So there's some motivation there for us as church, because we can vision, pray, brainstorm, think about where we wanna be in the future, and we already know that whatever thing we come up with, we're gonna get some seed money to help make sure that happens. So. Did I do a good job of convincing you to be a part of all of it? Yes? All right. So the next time you can participate, uh, and we'll send out the links, of course, to this Thursday night at 8.30 uh, via Google Meet with Jim, Sunday morning, next Sunday morning at 9.15, or Saturday, skip a Saturday, and then the next Saturday, June 1st, you can show up here at 10 a.m. with Carol Cadwalder. And over these next few weeks, uh, if you can't do that or you're coming in and out of those discussions, read through the book, answer the questions, and then you're going to get to hear me talk about the theme of each of these chapters on Sundays as we go through it together. All right. Volatile times, crazy times can be a gift to us, and that is the truth we're going to hang on to as we move forward together as church. Amen. Thank you for getting us involved in this. Yeah. On the birthday of the church, what a great time to announce uh, the reshaping of the church. As the uh, Acts uh, tells us, that the reshaping of the church started way, way back. Uh, as I was listening to some of the video prompts on reshaping the church, I heard one church minister say that their church was involved in welcoming, in worship, in work, in wonderment. I wanted to add one more, woke. That wasn't on the video, but I thank God that we are a congregation that realizes that God is with us and God is for us. And there are no walls at this table, no fences, and we are open and we are affirming. And this morning, as I regret to hear that our LGBTQ community, as we enter Pride Month coming, has to be careful in traveling abroad. Isn't that sad that they got that warning this morning? We ask God to help us as we are a privileged people being here and studying reshaping that we continue to open our doors to every person regardless of 
anything at all in their lives because in Romans 5, 5, it says this, we have this hope because the Holy Spirit has filled us with love. And that love transforms us and makes us new as we lift the bread, as we remember in the night that our Lord and Savior Jesus was betrayed, he took the bread, and when he broke it, he gave it to his disciples saying, this is my body given for you. This he said do in remembrance of me. In the same way, after dinner, Christ took a cup and poured it out for his disciples, told them and reminded them and us that this cup symbolizes a new covenant established for all people between God and us. These are the gifts of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Will you pray with me? Holy God, as we come to this communion table, please meet us closely and dearly. Warm our hearts with the ability to mold and shift to your will. Open our eyes to see the places you have chosen specifically for our congregation, Harmony Springs. Illuminate our minds to dream your dreams and empower our hands and feet with a conviction to move forward with them. Thank you for loving us to gently and sometimes quickly move us to your journey. Um, we love you, Lord. Amen. My friends, the table is set and all are welcome. We invite you to come forward and to receive. Would you come? Friends, take heed and be blessed.
right, my friends. Uh, you may be wanting to dart out, but don't right now. I want to highlight a few things going on over the next few weeks into the next month that you may want to be involved in. And we have some folks who want to come up and talk about some of these things. Uh, Jen and Nathan. Jen's going to talk about the uh, apples and bread collection for Blessings in a Backpack. Nathan, our soon-to-be Eagle Scout, is going to talk about the bridge. You want to start with that? Let's do it. So, hello everyone. It is me once again. <laughs> um, I'm sure you have all heard about the bridge at least once by now. And if you have not seen yet, we have all of our wooden materials already here. If you look over by the shed, you can see some laying out there and the rest of them are inside, so you won't see those. But next Saturday, we will be starting our first work day. We will be drilling the holes for the four corners of the bridge and hopefully building the base of it. The following week will be our second work day to hopefully finish up everything else. Um, our next weekend on the 25th is going to be from 9 a.m. to noon. And then the second work day on the 1st is also 9 to noon or until we ever get finished. So if you would like to show up for one or both of those, the help will be much appreciated and we will have snacks, drinks, and everything else there. So I hope to see you there. Awesome. Thanks, Nancy. His notes on one side, mine on the other. <laughs> so I'm standing up here to tell you about Blessings in a Backpack. We talked about this last week. Just like last year, we are collecting money for apples to be able to put in those bags for the school kids over the summer. They get an entire three pound bag of fresh apples as well as a loaf of bread. And so Harmony Springs has agreed to supply those items. They get a lot more other food. So let me tell you, they get approximately a, a paper box, you know, full of food once a month over the summer. So this is just part of it to supplement. We supplement the fresh ingredients. The rest of it is boxed and shelf stable and whatnot. So to do that, the packings are on June 27 and July 8. To do that, we, have, we are working with Agape Bread in Hartville, and they give us free bread for that day, which is pretty amazing and awesome. That saves us easily hundreds of dollars, you can imagine. Um, but the apples, we need approximately $450 for the apples. So if you would like to donate toward that cause, you can give me money at the end of the church service. I give it to Donna. You can give it straight to Donna. You can donate in the usual way that you do for the church and earmark it as a special offering for blessings or apples or whatever you'd like to say on that um, to make sure that they know where the money's supposed to go. Um, so we have that. Yeah, so I guess that's enough of that. Any questions? <laughs> I didn't figure. Um, so <laughs> I'm glad someone finds me funny as I do. Um, so this, this is a sign-up sheet for Stark and Akron Pride. It will be over by the front door on your way out, the tiny table on the right-hand side next to the medication bags that you've seen, the medication disposal bags if you have something at home that you need to dispose of. Yeah, little side note. To grab one of those bags and you can dispose of medications in a safe manner. It deactivates the medication. Read the directions on the back. You're all good. So for Stark Pride, that's coming up in just a couple weeks. So we have... Workday for Nathan, workday for Nathan, Stark Pride. That's three <laughs> weeks from now, so keep that in mind. That's the order of things. So Nathan, Nathan, Jen. <laughs> Nathan, Nathan, Garden, Yes. Garden's in there, too, on yeah, well, the day of. Uh, Chris, you'll yeah. share her own moment yeah. of that in just a second. I like how we have to line up yeah. to make sure that it's everybody like a, knows enough. It's like a city council meeting in here. Yeah. <laughs> well, we're not going to take any nays, though, just yays in this right, room. Yeah, yeah. Stark Pride, I need assistance from noon to six. It is at Centennial Plaza in Canton. You're welcome to just show up that day if you're unable to sign up, unable to commit at this point, but you find out that day that you're free, please do. There is a Pride Walk. It goes a quarter mile from the YMCA to the heart of the plaza. If you would like to do that, um, this is a sign-up sheet. There will be the pencil there. It's very open space. Put your name. I didn't say phone number. Please put your phone number so I know how to reach you unless you're positive I have it. Put your name and your number, and then also, would you like to do the, um, the march or the table and what hours you're available? So we also have the exhibitor table. That is what we need from noon to six. Um, the, the walk takes off at one o'clock for Stark Pride. Short note about Akron Pride coming up. That one is August 24th. 
That one's on Main Street in Akron. That march goes from um, the Spaghetti Warehouse all the way down to the other side of Lock 3. I think it goes all the way to um, uh, past Lock 3. <laughs> I can't think of it, the name what of it. Was before, I think it was all the way to Cascade. Cascade's what I was thinking of. Yeah, Cascade. Or, I think it goes all the way to Cascade. What? Ford Street. Ford Street. That's Cascade, though, isn't it? I still want to be right, so I'm gonna. <laughs> okay, thanks. <laughs> so anyway, that goes that, that takes off at 10 o'clock. That day we need help from um, 10 to seven. So if you can help any part of that time, even if you're not positive on the hours, put your name down on the list, then I can catch up with you later, because obviously Akron, we've got a few weeks, months to put that together and plan it. But for start, best you can, um, sign the sign-up sheet, it'll be by the door, thank you. Next candidate, step up to the mic. Um, <laughs> just wanted to remind everybody about the garden planting day. Um, that's the day we're probably gonna do the bulk of the planting, but because we have such a huge area and so many plants, it's kind of going to be a continuous thing. Um, so our garden work days are every Tuesday and Saturday morning at 9.30. Come if you can. Um, if you want to be included in the remind group, that's basically just if it rains a lot and we have to cancel, then we send the notifications through that group. Um, find me and I'll get your number down and add you to that. The only other thing I have is that we're starting the market on June 13th and we really, really need more vendors. So anybody who knows somebody who sells something, makes something, um, let me know and I'll reach out to them and, and hopefully we can get some more people involved. The first market, what's the, tell, the, tell me the date again, it's the 13th? June 13th. June 13th. And then the final market is October 3rd. Um, so every Thursday except for the 4th of July. Uh, and especially on the 13th, since it's the first week, uh, Christy has done a great job. She's lined up food trucks also that are gonna be there. And you gave me the list, it's a vegetarian food truck. The first market, we're having the green vegetarian and um, El Patron a taco, taco truck. truck. Yep. And then there's also going to be um, rolling refreshments, which is like a, like a, I don't know, they make beverages like yeah. coffees and teas and, and all that sort of thing. And they're going to be at every market. So. so at the very least, I'm going to just bring our family that day and feed them with a the food truck. So uh, come and just socialize. It's a great opportunity for us to just visit as a church and keep getting to know each other uh, as best we can and maybe buy some stuff at the same time, right? Yes, definitely come out and support the vendors that we do have <laughs> yes. so they keep coming back. Four to seven? Yeah. Four to seven on Thursdays. Just make it a recurring event in your, in your calendars. There you go. Thanks, Christine. Appreciate it. Uh, so June 8th, that Saturday, that is Stark Pride. It's in the afternoon. Uh, so you can spend the whole day with us if you want. Uh, you can come at 9.30 and help put plants in the ground and then take a break and then meet uh, Jen at Stark Pride. If you, I know we've had some families with kids that have said, uh, like, let us know when you're doing planting or putting the plants in the ground. It's a great opportunity for kids to come uh, and put some plants in the ground. Christie's grown the seedlings. I remember when our kids were little, they... Uh, did their best to put the plants in the ground, even though maybe some leaves get pulled off or uh, that kind of thing. But we'll help, uh, we will, and they can contribute and be a part of that big garden that keeps getting bigger every year that's out there and all the good we're doing together. So that's a lot of things to put in your calendar, a lot of ways you can be involved. And then of course, all the discussion groups that I mentioned that you can be involved in. The easiest one is Thursday night, do it from your own home, log into Google Meet and join Jim. So uh, there you go. I wanna leave you with the benediction that is a part of our reshape. Oh my, you're gonna have me read that, okay. All right. Read it with me if you can, help me. Now know that you are God's people. God's creative spirit brought you into this world and God's power sustains you to this very moment. So as you go to be who you are in Christ, Go as salt to flavor this tasteless world. Go as light to shine in the darkness. Go as grace to bring healing and hope to this broken and hurting world. And may the peace of God that surpasses all comprehension 
Guard your hearts and minds until we gather again. So be it. Amen. We'll see you all next week. Thanks for being here.